Now, I'll bet you remember the furthest planet from the Sun is Neptune. When European astronomers argued about what to call the newly discovered eighth planet back in 1846, they settled on the name of the Roman deity of the sea. This ice giant is four times the size of Earth. And if our planet was the size of a nickel, Neptune would be as large as a baseball. At the same time, the ice giant is 17 times as heavy. If you were approaching this icy world, it would seem blue and perhaps inviting. But this blue surface is actually a layer of swirling gas and permanent clouds. So don't get your hopes up. You wouldn't be able to land on this planet. Its mantle, made up of water, ammonium, and methane ice, is the closest thing Neptune has to a surface. But even down there, there isn't solid ground for you to walk on. Anyway, this distant planet is surrounded by mystery, and astronomers haven't cracked all of it yet. Why are the winds on Neptune so fast? Why does this world shed more heat than it gets? Why is its magnetic field offset? And what is the great dark spot? Well, let's try to find some answers. Neptune is around 30 times as far from the Sun as our home planet. That explains why studying this distant world is so difficult. It also means that the planet gets way less light and heat from our star. But at the same time, Neptune radiates a lot more heat than it's taking. If we compare Neptune to nearby Uranus, we'll see that even though Uranus is closer to the Sun, it emits almost the same amount of heat as Neptune. Astronomers don't know for sure why it happens yet, but of course there are theories because they're scientists. Some experts believe there is something fierce inside the blue planet that causes it to generate more heat than it receives. It might be the reason for Neptune's huge differences in temperatures, from minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit at the planet's rigid cloud tops to more than 12,000 degrees at the core of the ice giant. So you're going to want to dress in layers. Now, Such temperature variations might be the reason for powerful windstorms. Their speed can reach 1,200 miles per hour. For comparison, the most powerful winds on Earth move at a speed of 250 miles per hour. Another curious thing about Neptune's winds is that they are blowing westward, which is backward to the rotation of the planet. A study published in 2013 supposed that the winds on Neptune would appear in thin layers no more than 600 miles thick. Such a shallow depth might mean that condensing and evaporating moisture could produce those crazily fast air currents. Then there's the issue of Neptune's magnetic field being offset. If you were to overlay a magnet on this planet, it wouldn't line up with the center. Astronomers aren't sure why it happens. Magnetic fields are produced by moving currents, and all the planets, including Earth, are believed to have some conductive material moving in their bellies. But with Neptune's belly, it's a bit different. Its magnetic field is tilted at 47 degrees to the planet's rotation, which means that the rotation and magnetism aren't aligned inherently. And don't forget about the great dark spot. No, no, I'm not talking about the most massive storm in the solar system. That one is called the Great Red Spot and is located on Jupiter. I mean a corresponding spot on Neptune discovered by Voyager 2 in 1989. In 1995, the Hubble Space Telescope turned its eye on Neptune. But disappointingly, by that time, the spot had already mysteriously vanished. And scientists have no idea how exactly it disappeared. But guess what? Another dark spot has been found on the ice giant. Astronomers have known for quite some time that, from time to time, Neptune's surface gets dotted with such spots. These bizarre discolorations have been linked to high-pressure areas coming and going over the course of a few years. But no one has seen a dark spot forming until recently. Since then, astronomers have been observing the birth of dark spots quite regularly. Now they have a much better idea of where and when these huge vortices might form. Now, despite assumptions, astronomers once thought Neptune was a boring, featureless world, the ice giant has a hyperactive atmosphere. It's turbulent, with cloud ripples and severe storms. Plus, this planet has a ring system. Disappointingly, those rings are not distinct hula hoops circling Neptune, like those of Saturn. The ice giant's rings are weirdly chunky and contain gobs of material that form arcs in the outer ring. 
Astronomers explain that these clumps are actually places where loads of ring particles are stuck together. What it means is still unclear. But my favorite thing about Neptune is this one. Astronomers believe that deep inside the planet, there might be a layer where it rains diamond crystals. Intense pressure and temperature inside Neptune break methane molecules apart, releasing carbon. These carbon compounds find their fellow molecules and create long chains, which then get squeezed together, forming beautiful crystalline patterns like diamonds. When these diamond formations drop through the layers of Neptune's mantle, it gets too hot for them. That's why they vaporize, float back, and, you guessed it, repeat the cycle. Now you know why it's called diamond rain. How about a fun little experiment? Let's say we exploded Neptune, in the name of science, of course. As you already know, this planet doesn't have a solid surface. That's why, after activating the process, you'd see Neptune's liquid mantle burst. It would look like a water-filled balloon thrown down from the 50th floor. Uh, disclaimer, don't do this at home. The impact would send splashes of water, ammonia, and methane ice away into space. It'd be followed by lava-like remains of the planet's mantle, liquid and red-hot. And then there would be a hurricane of solid rocks. That's what would be left from Neptune's solid core made up of iron and other metals. OK, let's put this pretty ice giant back together. I've got one more experiment for you. Let's replace the Moon, yes, our good old satellite, with Neptune. The ice giant is definitely way larger than the Moon. The planet would look like a bright blue hot air balloon in the sky. And we would see it not only at night, but also during the day. It would appear to be 15 times larger than the Sun. If everything else remained the same, solar eclipses would seem to continue for ages. Once the Sun vanished behind Neptune's edge, our planet would be plunged into complete darkness for no less than an hour and a half. And since Neptune is also much more massive than Earth, its gravitational pull is much stronger. That's why, instead of getting itself a powerful companion and protector, our planet would end up as a satellite. Yep, Neptune's moon. It would orbit Neptune slightly further than its own largest moon, Triton. And there would be a great risk of Earth colliding with this space body. Uh-oh. But let's assume we were lucky enough not to cross paths with any of Neptune's satellites. Even so, we would have more than enough problems. Tides on our planet would be a thousand times more powerful than those caused by the Moon. Neptune's gravitational force wouldn't pull Earth apart, but it would heat our planet up. Like we need more of that, huh? The seismic activity would increase, setting off earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Well, that sounds unsettling. So let Neptune remain where it is now. I'm okay with a good old moon. Now we're done with the experiments, but hear me out. Beyond the orbit of Neptune, there's a mysterious Kuiper belt filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists fail to explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding another big planet from our sight. Are they in cahoots? This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9. And all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.